Mr. Vice Governor, thank you for taking the interview with us today. My first question is about the 14th five-year plan. As you know, the 14th five-year plan will set out a blueprint for China's economic development for the next five years. How do you picture Guizhou province in five years? The 14th five-year plan period is the first to come after China realized its target of building a moderately prosperous society in all respects and achieved its first centenary goal. In the 14th five-year plan period, we will look to make progress while maintaining stability, implement the new development concept, build a new development pattern, and adhere to high-quality development concept. The bottom line is to coordinate development and environmental protection, to open up new paths in the development of the Western region in this new era, to create new opportunities for rural vitalization and to seize new opportunities in the implementation of the digital economy strategy, also to make new achievements in the construction of an ecological civilization and to strive to create prosperity for the people. In general, there are several aspects that we need to focus on. First, economic development will reach new levels, will pay more attention to the quality and efficiency of economic development and continue to maintain economic growth higher than the national average. Second, ecological protection will reach new levels. Major breakthroughs have been made in the building of National Ecological Civilization Experimental Zone. We plan to increase the forest coverage to more than 60 percent, to maintain the number of days with good urban air quality at more than 95 percent, and to keep the proportion of water bodies with surface water reaching grade 3 and above at more than 90 percent. The third aspect is for people's lives to reach new levels. We are to consolidate and expand the result of poverty alleviation, to comprehensively promote rural vitalization, to exceed residents' income growth, and to further narrow the gap between urban and rural incomes. The fourth aspect is to increase the level of openness to new levels. New and major breakthroughs will be made in the construction of the National Inland Open Economic Pilot Zone. The business environment will be significantly improved. The final aspect is for the ability of social governance to reach new levels. The rule of law in Guizhou, a government on the rule of law and a society under the rule of law, will make positive progress. The ability and level of social governance needs to be improved further, and the people's sense of security and satisfaction will be maintained to a high level. Well, five years ago, Guizhou was still home to the largest impoverished population in China. Now it has the largest number of people lifted out of poverty. So what's the secret behind Guizhou's success? What's the work for the next phase? Guizhou used to be a province with the largest number of poor people, the largest impoverished area, and the longest history of impoverishment in China. Then we launched a general war on extreme poverty, and we fought four key battles on infrastructure, living conditions, agriculture, and education. To connect secluded villages to the outside world, we built over 78,000 kilometers of highways in only two years. To improve living conditions for villagers, we relocated nearly two million people from inhospitable areas in the mountains or at high altitude to new homes with basic facilities. To upgrade agriculture, we encouraged people to take advantage of Guizhou's amiable climate and grow tea trees and mushrooms. Lastly, we were one of the first provinces in the West to build a balanced educational system at county level. And we won the general war on extreme poverty. All 66 impoverished counties and some 9 million impoverished people were lifted out of poverty. We also managed to move nearly 2 million people out of the mountains. Now, Guizhou has completely torn off the label of extreme poverty that has stuck with us for thousands of years. After the victory of poverty alleviation, 
will still strive to create a colorful new future in Guizhou, where the people are rich and the environment is beautiful. Specifically, we'll start four new battles in the new era. The first is to build an industrial countryside. We will give full play to the advantages of rural ecology, the climate, and transportation. This will help develop high efficiency and mountainous agriculture and tourism, build a number of modern rural agricultural industrial parks, strong agricultural towns, and characteristic industrial clusters, while embedding the stable increase in people's income in the entire industrial chain. The second is create an ecological countryside. We will begin our work with the systemic thinking of a community with shared future for mountains, rivers, forests, fields, lakes, and grasslands under the premise of protecting Guizhou's unique and original ecological resources. We will coordinate the development and utilization of resources and realize the maximization of ecological value, economic value, social value, and touristic value. We are ambitious in building the countryside of Guizhou into a heaven for tired souls of human beings and a home to retain homesickness and the return to innocence. The third new battle is to build a more civilized countryside. We will promote the concept of health and guide rural residents to honor good traditions of hard work and loyalty so that they can forge ahead and achieve win-win cooperation. The fourth and last game is to create a safe countryside. We will improve the rural governance system and adhere to a combination of autonomy, rule of law, and the rule of ethics. We will continue to promote the fight against criminals, severely crack down on illegal and criminal activities, and strengthen the construction of rural emergency response systems in order to make rural areas more harmonious, safe, and stable. Thank you. Well, you mentioned infrastructure in the last question. So how did the improvement of infrastructure help Guizhou to get new opportunities in its economic development? And what's the next phase work? Guizhou is the only province in the country that is not supported by planes. In the past, the development of Guizhou was severely restricted due to a lack in infrastructure such as transportation. In recent years, we focused on breaking the bottleneck, taking the lead, and vigorously promoting the construction of transportation-focused infrastructure. The province expressway mileage is over 7.6 thousand kilometers. The high-speed railway mileage is over 1.5 thousand kilometers and the annual throughput of civil aviation passengers exceeds 30 million. The era of high-speed railways, the rise of air passenger transport, and the rise of waterway shipping have made it possible to connect our province thousands of mountains and rivers. This has supported Guizhou's development in the past decade, which is also referred to as the Golden Decade. The formation of a new transportation pattern in Guizhou has promoted a substantial increase in the flow of people, logistics, and information. The economic, trade, and cultural exchanges between Guizhou and the rest of the country and the world have been enhanced. The people of Guizhou are more confident and open. During the 14th five-year plan period, we will be in accordance with the requirements of high-quality development and strengthen our shortcomings in the formation, linkage, matching, and sharing of networks. To do that, we must first build a new type of infrastructure network that is high-speed, mobile, secure, and ubiquitous. It is also vital to accelerate the construction of new infrastructures such as 5G, big data centers, the industrial internet, the internet of things, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and the Beidou system. We aim to become the first in the country on that front. Secondly, we must build a network of energy infrastructure, the supply of water, electricity, 
oil and gas. We must accelerate the construction of large, medium and small reservoirs. Make every effort to build the province's 500 kilovoltage backbone grade network, improve urban sewage collection pipeline networks, accelerate the construction of urban gas pipeline networks and improve the ability to ensure basic energy. Thirdly, we must build a transportation network that connects the interior and exterior of the province, connects urban and rural areas, and connects waterways, roads, and airlines. We must optimize transportation among large and medium cities, inside and outside the province, and speed up the construction of national and provincial trunk lines secondary roads, and rural roads. This is so we can form an urban and rural network which is connected by high-speed road and rail. Now let's talk more about digital economy. Well, Guizhou's digital economy growth rate has ranked first in China for five consecutive years. How do you think Guizhou should keep the momentum? Guizhou is the country's first comprehensive national big data pilot zone. We have unswervingly implemented strategic big data actions to seize opportunities for the shortage of data. Its integration and application and build an international platform like Digital Expo. In the next step, we will continue to promote digital industrialization, industrial digitalization, and digital governance, and strive to seize new opportunities in four aspects to promote new breakthroughs in the development of the digital economy. First up is to take advantage of new opportunities in new infrastructure. We will actively participate in the layout of the national and integrated big data center, improve the construction of 5G, blockchain, and the industrial internet, promote the digital and intelligent upgrades of the traditional infrastructure, and help computing power and network infrastructure as well as innovation in infrastructure and integrated infrastructure. The second area is in data gathering. We'll intensify the collection of data resources and make cloud services in Guizhou bigger than ever. We will promote the circulation of desensitized public data, market data, and social data across governmental departments, at ministerial levels, and industries. We'll strengthen correlation analysis, explore data products, and service trading mechanisms, incubate a number of industry-leading, independent and reliable applications, build trading platforms, financial platforms, and industrial platforms for realizing the value of data resources, and do everything possible to make that data into a live resources. The third aspect is to seize new opportunities in the deep integration of big data with the economy, Guizhou will persist in using digital means to empower smart agriculture, smart industry, and smart service industries. We will seize opportunities in the next stage of technological revolution and industrial transformation and reconstruct the industrial value chain. The fourth area is to seize new opportunities in digital governance. Guizhou will continue to enhance the basic support and service guarantee capabilities of one cloud, one network, one platform. We will promote the construction of a big data security system, establish and improve big data assisted scientific decision making, social governance and people's livelihood service mechanisms, and promote scientific decision making in government and society. We are at the forefront of the country in terms of precision governance and efficient public services. Even during the peak of the trade war, we kept an open mind towards foreign tech companies like Apple and did our best to create a suitable business environment and cut red tape for foreign companies wishing to settle in Guizhou. Well, in the past five years, Guizhou has been trying to get itself involved in China's national uh, opening up strategies. But many people would ask that Guizhou is an inland province how do you think an inland province can get itself involved in a national strategy to be more opened up?
Since the State Council approved the establishment of Guizhou Inland Open Economic Pilot Zone in 2016, Guizhou has been exploring new paths, accumulating experience, and putting every effort to improve the operation of the pilot zone. We've achieved remarkable results. First of all, we've made every effort to facilitate investment and trade. We've fully implemented pre-access national treatment plus negative list system for foreign investment and built a single window for international trade. Guiyang City, a provincial capital, has been approved to build a comprehensive cross-border e-commerce pilot zone. In the future, foreign investments will be more convenient and business costs will be lower. The second achievement is that we've built an open platform. We have accelerated the construction of an open platform system and formed a 1 plus 8 national open platform with Guiyang New District as a core of Guiyang High Tech Zone and Guiyang Economic Development Zone as the focus. Activities such as the China Digital Expo and the Guiyang International Forum on ecological civilization have effectively promoted the construction of an open economy in the province. The third achievement is that we've optimized the business environment. We've strived to create an honest and efficient government environment, a fair and just legal environment, a public opinion environment that promotes morality and goodness, and a livable environment for innovation and entrepreneurship. The fourth achievement is to strengthen economic and trade cooperation with other provinces and overseas. We've continued to promote the large-scale investment of different industries and continuously strengthen the cooperation with other provinces and foreign countries. A large number of excellent and powerful enterprises such as Mao Tai Group and Wong Fu Group have accelerated their expansion in countries and regions along the Belt and Road. During the 14th five-year plan period, we will promote the construction of the country's inland open economic pilot zone will be fully integrated into Belt and Road construction, the Yangtze River Economic Belt, the Guangdong-Hong Kong-Macau Greater Bay Area, and the Chengdu-Chongqing Economic Circle, the East Asia-South Asia Economic Corridor, and other national strategies. We hold international events and world-class platforms such as Guiyang International Forum on Ecological Civilization, the Digital Expo, the China ASEAN Education Exchange Week and the Wine Expo so that we can combine international cooperation with local advantages and carry out all-round cooperation. All in all, we'll make Guizhou a highland for opening up to the outside world, a treasure land for investment and business, and a blessed land for innovation and entrepreneurship. Like I mentioned, Guizhou has made every effort to facilitate foreign investment and trade. We've fully implemented the pre-admission national treatment plus negative list system for foreign investors and established a single pass window for international trade. Guiyang, our province capital, has successfully built a comprehensive cross-border e-commerce pilot zone. For the next five years, foreign investment will be more convenient and business costs will be significantly lower. We will continue to attract more investment to some of our excellent and powerful enterprises such as liquor brand Mao Tai, and help accelerate their expansion in countries and regions who participate in the Belt and Road Initiative.